Hi, I'm Pastor Joe Spence. I know this message is going to encourage you, strengthen you, and take you to the next level. Stay tuned to the end. I want to pray a special prayer with you. Enjoy the broadcast. natural they, they would fold right uh, and you couldn't blame them but you know when you deploy love you can endure no matter how horrific a, a thing you may have gone through when you deploy love you can endure it and you can come up out of the other you can come up on the other side blessed come on flourishing and thriving amen amen, amen. so just wanted to encourage you um, as far as the love walk is concerned and I'm gonna get into what I wanted to talk about and we'll go as long as we can and we'll hook back up next week you'll be back next week right praise God that's what's so great about pastoring, right? I just go as far as I can, and we'll hook back up uh, next time I see you. Um, so we've been talking about right and wrong thinking, right? Um, we know that there are two types of minds, according to the Bible. Uh, the Bible says that they're, they're, you know, to be carnally minded. So there's the carnal mind. Uh, the, to be carnally minded is death. And then there's the spiritual mind. The Bible says to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So, so to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Uh, so two different kind of, two different directions you can go. You can, you can have a carnal mind and think according to this world's way of doing things, uh, and that leads to death and destruction. Or you can pivot and you can have a spiritual mind. You think on spiritual things. You develop uh, and you renew your mind according to the word of God, and you operate under, under uh, you know, the, that, uh, that direction, and that leads to life and peace. I don't know which one sounds better to you. Uh, you know, I made up my mind, man, uh, carnally minded equals death and destruction, spiritually minded, life and peace. Life and peace sounds a whole lot better to me. I, I done been through death and destruction in my life. I done caused enough problems because of my decisions. I know, I know what that path leads to. Uh, even before I was saved, uh, you know, uh, uh, this is exactly what happened to me when I, when I, when I, when I did things carnally. But, you know, you can be born again and still have a carnal mind. Right? And, and so that's why, that's why we talked about last week, we, talked about, we looked at Romans chapter 12, verse 2. So let's go ahead and look there. Because you, you know, when you get born again, your spirit becomes born again, but your mind still is going to think according to the old man. Right? Your spirit is renewed, and you, uh, you, your real self is a spirit. So your spirit becomes born again. You're a new creature in Christ. That is correct. That's all true. But your mind still has to be renewed. So according to Romans 12, 2, it says this, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed. So how are you transformed? By the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So the renewing of your mind we, we talked about last week is not an event. It's a process. What do I mean by that? It's not a one-time thing. The renewing of your mind is not a one-time thing. You don't say, well, pastor, I already renewed my mind. That's incorrect, right? Renewing of the mind is a, is, is a, is a day in, day out process, and you'll be doing it for the rest of your life. If you desire to be spiritually minded, right, you will be doing this for the rest of your life. The moment you stop renewing your mind, that's the moment you start going backwards. Right? First of all, you leak. You live in a world and you leak. The, 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 the things that you fill your spirit with as you go through life, you leak. Right? You get depleted. You have to continually keep the foot on the gas, continually feed yourself, right? continually renew your mind. Right? Because what you think on... I'll say it this way. Um, if our believing is wrong, it's because our thinking is wrong, right? So if you're thinking wrong, your believing's wrong. And what you believe is going to determine what you say, and what you say will, 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 will determine what your life looks like, right? Very simple. So I'll say that again. Um, if your believing is wrong, it's because your thinking's wrong. And if your thinking is wrong, right, uh, then you'll start to speak wrong. And so all of these things are connected. So you ha we have to... What I'm trying to tell you is we have to change the way we think. We have to transform our minds by the, by, by the word of God. Uh, and the Bible is very clear that we're to hold every thought captive, right? So, so what does that mean? Because some people say, well, pastor, I can't control the thoughts that come to me. I can't control the things that are in my head. Well, that's not true, right? The Bible says that we're to hold every thought captive. Look in this word. So a thought comes, you hold it right here, and you say, wait a minute, does it line up with the word? It does. You allow it to pass. If it doesn't, you ought to cast it down and replace it with the truth, right? I'll say it this way. You, can, you can't control a bird from flying over your head, but you can control it from building a nest in your hair, 
right? I'll say it again. You can't control a bird from flying over your head, but you can control it from building a nest in your hair. In other words, you can't control a thought that, that comes, right? They just come, but you, you can control how long it stays. And if you allow it to, to, to get on the inside and start to change what you believe. Uh, so we're to hold every thought captive and check it against this word. You need to be thinking about what you're thinking about. If you want to live in freedom, you have to be thinking about what you're thinking about. That's why Joyce uh, wrote that book called The Battlefield of the Mind. Right? She talked about how the enemy will build strongholds in your mind. Right? If you allow a thought to linger, it'll produce a stronghold. When you think about a military, uh, you know, uh, uh, invade, a military invasion, they go and they, they build strongholds. Right? Different. You know, back in the day it was a castle. Now it's a, it's a base. Strongholds that you know they can train and they can recoup. The enemy will build strongholds in your mind, and he'll he'll build different strongholds to be able to to have a, a place in your life and so you can't allow it to get to a stronghold because once it gets to a stronghold it becomes difficult now, not saying you can't deal with it not saying you can't work this out but you never want to let it get to a stronghold in the first place that means you have to be you have to be active in this process this isn't you know you just go through life and whatever happens happens you have to be engaged right you have to you're responsible for your development as a Christian Say amen to that. You're responsible for your development as a Christian, right? So you have a responsibility um, because, let me tell you something, if you don't, right, it leads to defeat. It leads to, to, to habitual sin. Like if you're dealing with sin and you're trying to work it out and you're trying to, 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 to gain victory over it, you know, because you got to renew your mind, you used to think a certain way, uh, man, sin is dangerous. It brings reproach. It erodes honor. It terminates dignity. It cuts down. It, it'll cut you down. It'll bring you low. Sin is at the root of every evil. Every evil, right? Uh, it, sin is a spiritual heart disease. Uh, it, it, it'll literally take you out. And we know that the wages of sin is death, right? Uh, sin kills joy. It destroys finances. It destroys families, right? It destroys the peace in the home. It'll destroy your business. Uh, you'll literally be living as a, as a dead man, right, if you don't deal with this, right? And so thoughts come, well, do this. If you don't deal with that thought, it'll literally lead you down a path of sin, you don't, you don't cheat on your wife, just, you just decide to do it one day. No, it's a thought that came, and you, you, you pondered it, and you, 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 you kept thinking on it, and, and you let it grow, and, and next thing, you took a step to make a phone call, look online, you, right? You don't just wake up in another bed. You know, you, you, these are steps in, that came because you allowed a thought to stay there. Right? You, you don't just get hooked on, 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 on something uh, f from one day to the next. Right? You think a thought came and you, allow it to, you allowed it to stay and you, you kept thinking on it and, and then it produced what it produced. Right? And so that's why it's so important to deal with this. So, um, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to talk to you on, on how to overcome this, how to overcome wrong thinking, how to overcome sin. Uh, because, you, you know, thank God, uh, you don't have to live in sin. You don't, you, there's always a way of escape. Jesus paid a price uh, so that you can live free. Uh, you don't have to live in bondage to anything, right? And so uh, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, 10, 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, 13. So I want to lay that foundation for you uh, because this is important, guys. We, we, we need to get a hold on our minds. We need to get a hold on our thought life. Uh, this is imperative if we're going to live in victory, uh, if we're going to progress in the plan and purpose of God, which is what this is all about. You know, I'm tired of people. You know, I got tired of it in my life, but I'm tired of seeing people at the same place year after year. Right, that's part of why we, we felt to, to do this church. Like, I, you know, we, we had put things into action in our lives, and we started to see some victory, and, and we're like, man, people need to know this. And so, you know, you don't have to see the same scenery year after year, right? You, you can go places you've not been before in the spirit. Come on, you can experience more freedom than you've ever experienced in your life. Come on. I declare this year you will experience more freedom than you've ever experienced in your life. I see you free from any oppression of the enemy, any sin that may happen. Have you bound? I see you free in the name of Jesus. First Corinthians chapter 10 verse 13 says this in the New Living Translation. The temptations in your life are no different from what others experience. And God is faithful. He will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. When you are tempted, he will show you a way out so that you can endure. So let me break this down real quick because 
let me just say this, temptation is not sin. Right, so if you're tempted, there's nothing wrong with you. You're not weird. You're, you're not, you know, a second-rate Christian. The Bible says that Jesus was tempted in all things. So, and we know that Jesus was sinless. So if Jesus was tempted, yet he was sinless, we know that temptation is not a sin. Are we on the same page, right? Um, and, he's, and, and according to this, we will never be tempted more beyond what we can handle. You know, I've heard people say, I just can't handle it. That's a lie. And so make sure, you know, get your words aligning with what God has said. Anytime temptations come, no, I will never be tempted beyond what I can bear, right? That needs to be coming out of your mouth. And the second part of this, I want to read it out of the New King James. Let's just read the whole scripture out of New King James. No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. So other people have gone through what you're going through is what this is saying. But God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. Here's that last part. But with temptation, he will also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Come up here real quick. Michael, you come up here real quick as well. I want to, give you, I want to show an illustration real quick. Both of you line up right here. Michael, you're going to be sin. <laughs> you're going to be the way of escape. You, my, you, go shoulder to shoulder with him. Shoulder to shoulder. That's back to back. <laughs> Facing me. This way. Right here. Right there. All right. <laughs> we didn't rehearse this, as you can see. <laughs> All right. Michael, you come alone. He's sin coming towards me. This will never happen. Sin will never come without a way of escape. Sin will always come. Go back to him. Shoulder to shoulder. Now walk together. Here's sin, here's the way of escape. Every time, oh, excuse me, temptation. Every time temptation comes, there will always be a way of escape. It's our job to recognize it. It's our job to be on the lookout for it. Temptation will never come by itself. Never. It's impossible. It will always come with the way out. It's very clear. We will never be tempted beyond what we can handle, and temptation will always come with the way of escape. So I declare right now that you will recognize the way of escape every single time. You will know where to go and how to do it and how to maneuver. In Jesus' name, amen. Give it up for these, these budding actors. <laughs> In some acting classes around here. <laughs> Joe, you're going to have to help us with this. <laughs> I want to read Romans chapter 6. It's one of my favorite passages in all the Bible. Romans chapter 6 out of the Message Bible. We're going to read the whole chapter. Uh, I think it's important. Romans chapter 6 out of the Message Bible. So no temptation has overtaken you except such as common to man. Right, that's telling us that we're not the only ones that have gone through this. That's comforting. You know, some people think, well, I'm the only one going through this. No, you're not. There's other people going through this. But God is faithful, will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you're able. But with this temptation, will always make a way of escape. So the way of escape will always come attached to temptation. All right, Romans chapter 6. So what do we do? Keep on sinning so God can keep on forgiving? I should hope not. If we've left the country where sin is sovereign, how can we still live in our old house there? Or didn't you realize we packed up and left there for good? So if you're born again, you've left that old way of doing things. That's how you have to see it. I no longer live the way I used to live. I don't do things the way I used to do them. Right? I am now a new creature in Christ. Right? I don't go back to that old way of doing things. This is what happened in baptisms. When we went under the water, we left the old country of sin behind. When we came up out of the water, we entered into the new country of grace, a new life in a new land. That's what, what, that's, that's what baptism into the life of Jesus means. When we were lowered into the water, it's like the burial of Jesus. When we were raised up out of the water, it's like the resurrection of Jesus. Each of us is raised into a light-filled world by our Father so that we can see where we're going in our new grace sovereign country. All right, here, here's what I want to get to. Could it be any clearer? Our old way of life was nailed to the cross with Christ, a decisive end to that sin-miserable life, no longer captive to sin's demands. What we believe is this. If we get included in Christ's sin-conquering death, we also get included in his life-saving resurrection. We know that when Jesus was raised from the dead, it was a signal of the end of death as the end. Never again will death have the last word. When Jesus died, he took sin down with him. But alive, he brings God down to us. 
Here we go. From now on, think of it this way. Sin speaks a dead language that means nothing to you. God speaks your mother tongue, and you hang on every word. You're dead to sin and alive to God. Say that. Say, I'm dead to sin and alive to God. It goes on to say, that's what Jesus did. That means you must not give sin. Listen to this. That means you must not give sin a vote in the way you conduct your lives. Don't even give it the time of day. The time of day is, you know, somebody says, hey, what time is it? And you just take a second. Don't give sin a second. Don't give it any of your attention. Don't allow it to, to even get an inch in your life. Right? That's what this is saying. Let me go, go, back, uh, go back. Go back. 11. You're dead to sin and alive to God. That's what Jesus did. That means you must not give sin a vote in the way you conduct your lives. Don't even give it the time of day. Don't even run little errands that are connected with that old way of life. Amen. Throw yourselves wholeheartedly and full time into God. Remember, you've been raised from the dead into God's way of doing things. Sin can't tell you how to live. I said, sin can't tell you how to live. After all, you're not living under that old tyranny any longer. You're living in the freedom of God. Verse 15 says this. So since we're out from under the old tyranny, does that mean we can live any old way we want? Since we're free in the freedom of God, can we do anything that comes to mind? Hardly. You know well enough, listen to this, you know well enough from your own experience that there are some acts of so-called freedom that destroy freedom. You know, I used to say it all the time, I just, I just want to be free, I ain't trying to go to church, I just want to do what I want to do, I want to, I want to party, I want to, man, I ain't trying to be, you know, I can't do this, can't do that. But man, all those things led to bondage. Every one of the decisions that I made under the so-called guise of freedom, I want to be free, led to bondage. Isn't that crazy? That's how it works. Sin keeps you longer than you want to stay. You pay more than you want to pay, and it leads to death every time. It, it will cause something in your life to die. It'll kill your marriage. It'll kill your relationships. It'll kill your health. It'll kill your pocketbook. It'll kill your sanity. It, it, that's what it's after. It destroys every single time. So since we're free in the freedom of God, oh, where are we? Oh, all right. Um, hardly. You know well enough from your own experience that there are some acts of so-called freedom that destroy freedom. Offer yourselves to sin, for instance, and it's your last free act. But offer yourselves to the ways of God, and freedom never quits. All your lives, you've let sin tell you what to do. But thank God you've started listening to a new master, one whose commands set you free to live openly in his freedom. I'm using this freedom language because it's easy to picture. You can readily recall, can't you, how at one time, the more you did just what you felt like doing, not caring about others, not caring about God, the worse your life became and the less freedom you had. Man, that's my story right there. I feel like this is my story. Right? The more I did what I just wanted to do, come on, the more it destroyed my life. goes on to saying, how much different is it now as you live in God's freedom, your lives healed and expansive in holiness. Verse 20 says, as long as you did what you felt like doing, ignoring God, you didn't have to bother with right thinking or right living or right anything for that matter. But do you call that a free life? What did you get out of it? Nothing you're proud of now. Where did it get you? A dead end. Verse 22, but now that you've found, but now that you've found, you don't have to listen to sin tell you what to do and have discovered the delight of listening to God telling you, what a surprise. A whole heal put together life right now with more and more life on the way. Work hard for sin your whole life and your pension is death. But God's gift is real life, eternal life delivered by Jesus our master. 
And so this is why we have to deal with sin. This is why we have to worry, you know, maybe thinking about what we're thinking about, right? Uh, go after right living, right? Become a student of the word because we know that your level of understanding of God's word will determine the level of your freedom. You, you have to get understanding of God's word. You have to fill yourself with the knowledge of God, right? Because the Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Knowing the truth, knowing and applying the truth will literally make you free, right? You get so full of God's word, right, to the point where darkness has no hiding place in you anymore. Come on, has no hiding place in you. There's nowhere in you, come on, uh, uh, that, that the devil can, can, can put his hooks in you. There, there's nowhere in you he can hide because you filled yourself with so much light, with so much of his word, that the byproduct is freedom in every area of your life. But again, again, it goes back to having a free will. You, you have to, it's your responsibility. You have to decide that you're going to live this life. That you're about that life, as they say. About that Christian life. That this is what you are going to do. This is who you are. This is your identity. I'm a new creature in Christ. I'm not living the way, I'm li the way I've been living anymore. I'm not going back to that old way of doing things. I'm tired of living like this. I'm tired of going through the same thing year after year. I'm tired of problem after problem, and I got no answer for these problems. I'm tired of depression. I'm tired of anxiety. I'm tired of dealing with the same sin year after year. I'm tired of it. You, you, you have to get to that point. You have to get to that point. And man, as soon as you do, and as soon as you make a decision to do what we're talking about, oof, man, your life will never look the same. And let me tell you, you qualify for what we're talking about. Well, Pastor, I made a lot of mistakes. I've been doing this for a long time, and I just, man, I, go, I, I keep coming to church, and I leave church, and I feel like God's done with me. He's not done with you. Let me tell you something, child of God. He is not done with you. If you're breathing air, if you're sucking air right now, come on, there's a purpose for your life. God has a purpose for your life. The call of God is without repentance. He has not changed his mind about you. He loves you. He desires intimacy with you. He desires a relationship with you. Come on, he desires for you to fulfill what he's put you on this earth to do. You know what that means? That the call of God on your life is without repentance. Meaning he has not changed his mind. We change our mind and we turn our back and we leave. And, but he's always here. He's always here. When we lift our hands and we, we ask for repentance, right? Repentance is the way back. Yeah. Repentance is the way back. You get lost out there. You know, you get lost. You drive in your car. You get lost. The GPS is the way back. Thank God. <laughs> repentance is the way back to the presence of God. It's all, it, all, you, all that is required. And repentance is a turning away. Right? It, I'm not doing that anymore. I'm now doing this. I'm re you renew your mind. I, this is what I, I was doing, but this is what the Bible says I should be doing. I'm going to focus on this. I'm going to get this into my mind. I'm going to renew my mind. I'm going to start talking different. I'm going to start acting different, right? And I'm going to start living different. Amen. Come on, amen. I'm telling you, there's no better life than living for God. There is no better life. I'm telling you this because I've been on both sides. I, I've been on the other side of the fence, as they say. The grass is not greener over there. I've been there. I know what it produces, a life of so-called, I just want to be free. Young people say all the time, I, I have church. I ain't trying a bunch of rules and this and that. It's not about rules. It's not about rules. God has set some things into play, and he's given us parameters to protect us. The, the, these, are, these are bumpers and, and boundaries, and, 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 and God has done this so that so that we would we wouldn't go places that'll destroy us and do things that'll destroy us man thank god thank god for him go to joshua 1 8 and then we'll close joshua 1 8 joshua chapter 1 verse 8 moses had died joshua was taken over here but uh he was getting some instruction and um here's something that god told him he said this the book of the law or you can say the word of God, the book of the law, shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou may observe and do according to all that is written in it. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and they shall have good success. Uh, put it in the New Living Translation for me. New Living Translation. Study the book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night, so you will be ready so you'll be sure to obey everything written in it. 
only then you will prosper and succeed in all that you do. So here's the steps right there, right? You speak the word, you meditate and study on the word, you do the word, and man, you'll have success and you will prosper. That's what we've been talking about. This sums up everything we've been talking about. You get in the word, become a student of the word, you speak the word, come on, you do the word, and you get results every single time. Your life will never look the same if you do these three things right here, right? You, your life will never look the same because we know 2 Timothy 3.16 says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, right? And so it's profitable. Godliness is profitable unto all things. When you develop in God, it'll profit you in every area of your life. This isn't just about you come to church and you just kind of, okay, checking a box. Man, you're developing what you're doing right here, what you're preparing for right here will produce in every area of your life. It'll help you in every area of your life. Come on, I see things turning for you. I see things changing for you. I see you freer than you've ever been. Come on, I see the, 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 the bondage that has been, been, been wrapped around you for years being broken right now in the name of Jesus as you have taken a step to obey God, to meditate on his word, to be a doer of the word, to, to renew your mind in the things of God, to go after truth. I see your life never looking the same. I see you moving forward in the plan and purpose of God. In the name of Jesus. Come on, if you agree with that, shout amen. amen. God bless, man. Go ahead and stand up on your feet. Thank you so much for tuning in. I pray the message blessed you. We never like to end a broadcast without giving you the opportunity to make Jesus the Lord and Savior of your life. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. So if you mean business with God, He means business with you. I want you to join me in praying this very simple but powerful prayer. Mean it with all your heart. Repeat this after me. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. I repent of all my sin and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe that you are the Son of God that you were crucified, and on the third day, you rose from the dead. I give you my life. Do something with it. I believe I am now saved in Jesus' name. The Bible says all the angels in heaven are rejoicing because you just prayed that prayer. Welcome to the family of God. For more content, go to YouTube and search for Joe Spence, Life in Christ Church to find our YouTube channel. Click on the channel and hit subscribe. From there, you can find short videos from Pastor Joe and Pastor Sarah and our latest messages. Don't forget to like, comment, and share. Now you're ready to enjoy our content and build your faith.